This is a QHHT session segment. My client went back to a life in ancient Egypt. At the start of the session, he described that he was standing at the edge of a wood, looking across a lake, and on the other side of the lake, he could see a pyramid. So I hope you enjoy listening. I want you to focus on you. Can you tell me what you're wearing on your feet? Nothing. Can you scan up your body and tell me what are you wearing on your body? Just um, because it's warm. Yeah. Just a pair of shorts. Um, well, it's kind of shorts. Yeah. Are you um, wearing anything around your neck? Um, Any jewellery or ornamentation or anything on your body? It's more... It's like the teeth of some animal. I don't really know what it is. Mm. It's about that length. Yeah. So there's a kind of a necklace, but they're each hanging singly, you know, from here right round. Yes. And I think I have a, also um, I have a circ a, a chain as well. Mm. It doesn't hang just as far. And there is um, a medal like circular pen yes. pendant. Yes. And it has um, a sapphire crystal in the middle. Yeah. It's quite big actually. It's 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 um diameter of a of a glass, small, you know, narrow glass. Oh yes, quite big. And there are Various designs and shapes on it, on the you know from bit and uh, that's surrounding the, the sapphire. Oh yes, um, uh, yeah. Do you know the significance of this sapphire or this necklace, and why do you wear it? It's used for something. Um, I carry it because it's the only safest place to keep it for me that I'll have it at all times. Mm. It can be used sometimes um, on the third eye. Yeah. Or I can go into a totally different dimension or see in a different dimension. Yeah. And I see when that happens, that I actually, my physicality dissolves into that of an energy. No, so, really. And I can go from, go wherever. Um, and... But what happens to your body when you say the body uh, uh, because because of the nature of the body and the capacity it becomes a particle accelerator. So that means that the body itself loses its obvious physical oh. structure and becomes um, an energy. Wow. Yeah, so to all intents and purposes, anyone looking at you would say you disappeared if you become an energy, if your body becomes an energy. Well, it wouldn't happen in front of... People. It wouldn't people that would... That are... Um, it wouldn't happen in the company of ordinary people. 
you. Yeah, I see. But only in the exceptional circumstances, but they wouldn't know who I was. Yeah. Um, did someone teach you how to do that? It has always been known. Mm. And where do you go then when you dissolve into an energy? Is the energy is it's a very bright energy and it's, it's like a little wisp of a cloud. Yeah. And it's for transportation. Yeah. Or to go from one sphere to another or place if you want to, for want of a better description um, and would you leave the earth plane I'm uh, just looking at something um, that's okay take your time don't let me rush you take your time um, see, where this happened as where I was being the lake, the wood beside the lake. Mm. So the energy is, flows over the lake, and with the sun shining, it becomes, it looks like a mist. Yeah. Small, little, no, no not the whole area, but it, it magnifies out yeah. to part, to a large part of the lake particularly where the sunlight is. And that turns it to a little bit of a tornado or a whirl, but, but the other way around. Anti-clockwise, or? Clockwise. Clockwise. And See, there was a reflection of a pyramid in the distance. There was a pyramid in the distance. Yes. So then that my energy seems to transfer to the pyramid. Yes. And it opens. Yes. You know, it just opens. Like if you divide it in half, it just opens out. Oh, yeah. And I enter into that. Yeah, and continue watching then and just see what else happens. And <sighs> what did you see? It's it's an energy shift. Yes. So, actually, it, the pyramid becomes a vehicle. Really? Of... It's moving. Well, it has to, within the pyramid, there's a sense of the capacity to go, to travel. Oh, it, to, yeah. To move interstellarly. Yeah. Or even within the earth itself. Mm. And the actual shift it in was the realisation of its capacity to to um, as a transport transportation system. Yeah. And what happens is then my energy or frequency takes on a bit, takes on a, a shape mm. and that in itself becomes the trigger for this to move. The pyramid itself may not be moving, but it's kind of a portal. Oh, right, yeah. Where it's very hard to explain now. It's not exactly a portal. It's working within the energies of the ether. Yeah. 
and there are different highways, if you like. Yeah. And you can move along those, call them nodal energies or points. Yeah. See, you have the nodes of, of energy and then this, the actual, I just want to say mirror, but it's not, it's the, it's the, um, the frequency or the memory of the existence of what was been within the pyramid and my frequency. Mm -hmm which as it travels it's guided by the energies of the different nodes yeah yeah and within the energy itself and the fact that it has different bandwidths can activate little portals or, or um, guidance systems which will bring it to different different constellations but also within the earth itself because the earth is a mirror of the universe itself mm. so it can be inner earth or it can be outer earth outer earth there's so much there that's not seen none of us see it the ordinary human can't see it there's a plethora of activities going on. Yeah, like I heard this before, that there's no such thing as empty space. There's something within it all. There's, there's life within the whole space. It's full of life. It's full of, I don't know, there are things in it. It's not empty space. Is that what you Space mean? is empty in the sense of that there is no density. Okay. So within the expanse, there are configurations of energy. Yeah. And they work at, they're working at so many different levels, depending on the, 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 depending on the wavelengths, the tone, the frequency of the bandwidth of vibration. Yeah. So you can go from what's happening within, within or just above the earth itself, within the ether, to what's happening within the cosmos. Yes. And every downing and every so often there are portals, massive portals. Yes. That brings, uh, um, that brings um, a convoy, if you like, allows for a convoy of exits out to the various parts of the universe and likewise entry as well. Yeah. Um, and so when you saw that pyramid across the lake, was that on a particular portal or node point even there then? Yes, it would have been, and that would have entered, that would have crossed the lake. The, there would have been an energy point crossing the lake to where I was. Yes. I would have been in an area that had... So that had I, that would have been partly mm. a trigger for the, uh, triggering the the medallion I had with the Chris with oh, the sapphire. Oh yes, I see. So you knew you knew to go to that point. Yes. But yeah, and and is this something that you would do often? Travel like in this way within, say, that pyramid. It's it's one of many ways. Um, 
and yeah, can you maybe elaborate? Um, I'm just looking yeah, to see. Okay, take your time. It, it can go, it can be done through, as, a, as I mentioned about the particles and, and the, yeah. the energy, but it could also be through what's perceived or seen as a being as well. Yeah. And the being is of a crystalline nature and because of the crystalline nature of the sapphire in combination with my own codes, I, I can encode that being and I take on a new or a different um, a different what's the word? Form or force. Yeah. That's particularly um, um, adapted to a particular tra place and uh, uh, travel or yeah. interaction with others at a particular level. It's the entry into a particular level of, of beings. Mm. And where you join in, where I join in in similar activities. Mm. Um. That can be done at will or at request by others, and it's dependent on the higher source, and in conjunction with those at a lesser level than higher source. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by the higher source? That which is of creation, by creation, for creation. Mm. So that which works with the original source of creation. It's source, source. The original source. Yes. Mm. Um, and can you tell me about um, going out to some of these beings? Um, can you see that perhaps going when you travel out there into interstellarly where you go what kind of beings do you communicate with and do you have to have your form like them you were saying take on a form, something like their form? Yeah, when I take on the form of, of a similar form, that's a more um, primitive way, but it has to be done because of the frequency in which, in which they are. F they are. Mm. So, um, let me see now. There's different constellations, so you have different beings. Yeah. And it's all always with beings of. Positive light, 
Yeah. And it can be multidimensional. Yeah. But they have a, a, a more linear capacity and quite complex within their own dimension they are relatively simple yeah but to where I come from extremely complex as in this earth mm. as the human that I've been recognised as can you see any of those beings for me and can you describe them um, for me? And at the level that I'm at, or where I am at this moment, yeah. that I've mentioned, um, they have a, a sort of a similar outline as humans have. Yeah, humanoid looking. Yeah, but their heads are a little bit different. They're more um, animal-like in the sense that we have our face and we have our ears and head. They have a more, this particular one has something protruding like, like, um, like you might have seen in some of the dinosaurs where they have their oh, yeah. um, kind of, they have a kind of, Say this is our face. They have a very rough looking yeah, face. Yeah, not so And then there are kind of protrusions mm. from the top of the head right around towards the ears and then down along the jaw. Mm. And But they have um, arms, legs and body, torso. Yeah. And it's in a some kind of a, within a, uh, I, I presume it's a, a, a uniform, it's, it's a very strong leather-like, but it has uh, different things on it. Uh, some of them are crystalline, See, mm. yeah, I see them that way because I'm coming from a different dimension. Yeah. So in reality, to others, they may be different. Oh, yes. This is how you see them. Yeah. And uh, how do you communicate with them? Is it telepathic? Telepathic. And what do you, do, do you communicate about? Explaining trying to though this is, is is kind of hard to it's something to do with the workings of that level each each level of the creational field 
has different structures. Yeah. And they are working at a particular level mm. within that st structure. And it's kind of explained or try to explain how it works versus how others work. Mm. And this is really complex. See, there are different elements in terms of like elements like stones, rocks, gases, yeah. that sort of thing. And they are working in a different combination in that particular sphere. While we rely on oxygen, yeah. they rely on something else. I don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. Um. more carbon dioxide right. than oxygen. They, they, they have the oxide version aspect of the carbon dioxide. Yeah. They have a capacity to filter. Right. And when you are at a when they are at a different they are at a different frequency and different level, mm -hmm. and all the elements in that dimension interact in a much different way. Yeah. Because they have different frequencies. Yeah. Because they're at a different stage of evolution or aspect of evolution. Yeah. And it's part of the experiment of the creational experience. Mm. Would you say there is a higher level of evolution than the people on Earth? Oh, um, very much so. And do you know maybe what dimension they might be in? Dimension, the word dimension and the use of the word dimension is a human construction. Mm. So they are not part of the human construction. No. So it's it's more about the developmental aspect of the creational field itself. He, who, what, whatever word you choose. Mm. And its desire for experience. Yeah. Where it sends out its... Um, aspects of itself yeah. to experience certain levels of um, ex uh, of creation as of itself at experience I mean the Because they're at a particular level, they'll have a, they have a, they're within their own particular dimensions, mm. their own set of um, experiences. Mm. But it, we're all at different levels. Each dimension, each level of the strata of the creational field is as much, is, is, is a different is different. Yeah. So the experience and the beings or existence of life within that is of a much different dynamic and it operates yeah. in a different way to what we perceive. That's right. So while while we may not understand it, it's very understandable from their point of view. Yes. And I wonder, have they ever come to Earth to experience Earth? Uh, 
Um, it's as if they had passed through and, and being and gone mm. in, in, a, in a flash because it wasn't yeah. wasn't at a level that they would have. Mm. And partly because in, in other dimensions there is a memory or a knowing. Yeah. And that in itself creates certain restriction. Yes. And sometimes it's the rigidity mm. that they favour. Mm. Whereas within our existence on this earth, there's loss of memory or connection with source. Yes. In a, in a conscious way. But it's within each of us. And our presence here is to to allow us to invite the light within so that we can show it outwardly. Mm. And that it gives rise to free will. Yeah. Whereas in other areas, there isn't the same. There isn't free will. Like there isn't that. a form that's called free will. Yeah. There's a frequency and an energy which has to be abided by. Yeah. Is there more uniformity then between the beings while on Earth? We can vary a lot more because, you know... It depends, yes, each strata and each each entity has a different function. Mm. So it's more... It's more catalogued. Mm. Yeah, so... While we have the capacity to be all... Yeah. Um, in 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 a state of it, in, it given that if if we be, we evolve to a point where there's a, st- a, a state of enlightenment. Yeah. And st- stronger connection with source. Mm. We we can be. Very powerful. Exactly. Um, really, have we got the capacity to be a lot more powerful than those beings that you were looking at there? Not in the state that we're in, because our frequency is not complex or strong enough mm. to do that. We have to move in stages. Yes. Um... So it would be a gradual process of us, and uh, there are certain. Uh, it works on two levels. There's the collective, and then there's the individual. Yes. And then can be a number of individuals. There can be uh, farm units. Yes. And they will accelerate at a much different pace. Yeah. And their awareness, certain individuals will have a very strong connection and awareness, but they may not necessarily be have the capacity to bring everybody with them in terms of enlightenment. It's a it's a slower. Yeah. And when the sig when when the vibration of the earth itself and the collective reach a certain level, then there will be a, um, a shift. And we talk about the ascension. Yeah. And the new earth. Yeah. But that's only just the changing of the energy or the codes within the earth itself. Yeah. And the human being changing. It's not as if we're ascending to somewhere else. No.
and does it have to for like the earth to raise its frequency do does everyone have to raise at the same time or, you know for it to happen on mass or how would how would it happen And it's a combination of the individuals who have a high frequency yeah. connecting within the, the nodes of mm. the earth yeah. and activating the various nodes in various areas of the earth, which in itself will raise the collective frequency. A bit unknown to the to the masses, but uh, some will not be able to sustain. Sustain. They just they'll go back to uh, the lesser, and they'll remain there until such time as they can deal with what's what's being presented to them. But if they're not able for it, would the frequency not be too high for their bodies to live? Really? Yeah, well, then they'll return to source. They'll die, like well, what we call death, like they'll return to source. They'll return to source and then they'll be reprogrammed or recontracted. Yeah. And give it another chance. And then it'll, it'll keep going on and on like that <laughs> until such time as they come out of the... Uh, the um, are activated but like if the earth um, is raising its frequency and some people can't sustain it so they return to source well they when, can't when they come back in they will have a contract yeah but but will their vibration have risen enough to come back in after they've gone and if they're coming back in they're coming into they're coming in as Remember, remember, when they go back to source, a source absorbs the frequency of their own frequency and energy, and it'll be re recalibrated, yeah, and sent out again, and then they have to go through the experiences while it'll be at a different level because everything has moved on, so they have to go in at a different level. Yeah, but. But if the earth has risen its frequency, um, uh, when they come back, will they come back at a slightly higher frequency than they left? Well, they'll be tuned. Mm. Uh, because when they come back, they are there to create the experience or an experience uh, through their soul contract and connection with source. Because they are part of source. Yeah. So source has to experience. It's yeah. part of its existence is to experience and expand and learn. Yeah. So in doing that, each, the individual soul will come back at a different frequency, at a different level. Yeah. I but see. it will be relative to where it was before. Yeah. But it'll be coming in at a slight, a different frequency, but at the same relative level at which it left. Yeah. Um, do you understand what I mean by that? I think I do. And what about the karma, say? Does that come into it, the karma that maybe that mightn't have balanced or...? Well, if they have certain karma that they had and they've come back in with version of that mm. that's still lessons that they have to learn, learn yeah. and go through yes yeah and it, it will be given they will be given an uh, a certain they'll come in a certain frequency and that frequency will have a, a version of the karma that exists 